Hello, Vinyl Community. My name is Mark Oppenlander. Now I'm actually entering Michael slash Poetry on Plastics 5,000 subscribers contest. Very impressive, Michael. We've been in touch, you and I, over the, the years. Um, I have a group called One Alternative, and Michael reviewed our last album, which I really appreciate. So I'm entering your contest, Michael. So here we go. Uh, first band I saw live is the first question, or statement, whatever. Aerosmith, the Get Your Wings tour in 1974. They came to the Tower Theater uh, in Upper Darby, Pennsylvania. Elephant's Memory opened up for them, or they were supposed to open up for them, but they never showed up. My father took me. I was um, 13 years old at the time. And um, we sat there for about two hours waiting for Aerosmith to come on. I was just amazed at the place. The Tower Theater, if anybody's ever been there, is a wonderful place to see music. I think it just closed. I think it did, or maybe the, maybe it's not, it didn't close, but the, the big sign, the tower, was taken down last year. Anyway, that was my first concert, and um, I, it was fabulous. It was so, Aerosmith, what a band to see live. Oh my, okay. What was I listening to at 17 years old? What you are listening to is what I was listening to at 17 years old. The Dixie Dregs. Um, when I was 16, I got this album without all the writing on the cover. And when I was 17, I was eating this up alive. The Dixie Dregs, what if? They were the main reason, they were like after the Beatles, the Dixie Dregs took me to the next level musically. The Beatles got me started, the Dixie Dregs said to me, I could do this possibly as a, uh, way of making a living. Uh, I can't say enough about the first three Dixie Dregs albums. If you haven't listened to them and you're into uh, instrumental, really good instrumental music, listen to the Dregs. Okay. Uh, an entry point into a genre. Going along the same kind of lines, the first time I ever heard what we would now call fusion music was this album, Billy Cobham's Spectrum. Uh, it was played on the local uh, radio station WYSP and probably WMMR for those of you in the Philadelphia area. This was played, I was 12 years old when this came on and I was nuts about this stuff and I thought his name was Billy Coblin but I knew he was a drummer because they played a lot from this album. It, it's just got me into it then I got into Jeff Beck then I got into the Dixie Drags and then the, the, the whole slew after that. Okay, next question. Um, oh yeah, the album that was show off my stereo. Well, yes, it's not yes. It's Frank Zappa's One Size Fits All. The Mothers of Invention, One Size Fits All. This is not only an incredibly sounding record uh, sonically, it's the best record. I mean, every, every thing on here is excellent. It's got humor, and it's really not stupid humor. Well, it's actually very stupid. That's why I like it so much. I mean, you just go in there, um, and uh, let me see, where's, where's the one I want to go? But, uh, and, uh, she was the daughter of a wealthy Florentine Pogan. Reading the Weep was, was her adjustable slogan. I mean, those are great lyrics, man. And the uh, musicianship on this, it was Frank Zappa's best band, in my opinion. Another band I saw live back in the day. Again, my dad took me. So that's the album I would I would say listen to this thing with cranked up and you will hear so much nice stuff. This is out of the uh, old masters series, which is a box, you see. Okay. So albums that were mixed badly. I have two of them. I love these albums. Um, Chicago's second album. After listening to the first album, album CTA. And then going to this, you can hear a big difference in the sound. It sounds like they just put a sock over the microphones. I don't know what happened, but it just didn't, it just was not good. And I understand that there are remixes and remasters, and I'm going to have to find something because uh, this is a fab album. Another album that I really, really loved and still do is Derek and the Dominoes. This is the 50th anniversary of this album. This is... Uh, probably a 70s or 80s 
of a, you know of the original mix. It's been remixed and remastered and blah blah blah. Uh, the remix I I bought as a CD and they pulled the drums back and Jim Gordon's drums are too good to to be taken back in the mix, ladies and gentlemen. Um, great album. I hopefully will find a better sounding album in the future. Um, the last question, an upgrade, I don't really want to upgrade at this point. There's nothing to upgrade. I mean, I'm pretty happy with what I got. I, I have Magnapan speakers and a, I don't know, a, uh, I don't even know what I got. An AccuPhase, a really nice AccuPhase, uh, receiver. It's not a receiver, it's an integrated amplifier. And, uh, so on and so forth. Um, if we're gonna get anything, it would be a CD changer, you know, with the five CDs in it. I still like CDs. So, I think that's gonna cover it. So, uh, Michael, I wish you, uh, another 5,000? Would you want 10,000? That's a lot of people to take care of. Um, and that's it for me, and, um, I wish everybody as good a 2021 ahead as possibly can be. Take care, bye-bye.